So this is it, part three, and we're on to the final fight for Yang Zhou, Yang Zhou cattle farm. So this is the army that was given us all that trouble since the very beginning, pretty much. Way bigger than I anticipated, nearly 4,000, and we destroyed that army that had the unbreakable general, Zhen Yu. And now it's just the remaining 2,250, and this time we're coming with 540. So we have some more numbers. We have four units of Sabre Militia Cavalry this time, so it should go a bit better. And we also have three pretty solid robust bodyguards. The Axe Band have some more men. So yeah, I think this is a much better fight to take. This is uh, probably like really, really efficient in terms of being able to actually pull off these victories for what we invest in them. So we've got like eight units, eight units under three generals. So that's not much in terms of the cost. And we're, if we win this, we will have pulled a territory that was really heavily defended. Yeah, I feel good about it. I think this has been fought in, in the open, yeah, it is. So, they have trees there, that's not great. To use the trees properly, we're going to probably want to be taking the aggro from the archers while we're inside the forest there. So, we can take aggro from the archers from within the trees with our... Oh wait, they're not here yet. So, Sabre Cavalry Militia, I don't think they have... Yeah, they've got no upgrades yet, so they're still vanilla, and we're going to have to be careful with them because they're depleted too, so this one is only at 13, when they're 29, that's the most full contingent out of the four, so that one can take most of the aggro. This guy has 88 speed now, that's fucking sweet, and probably going to lead with that, so we've got one bodyguard with high armor and speed that we can lean on to hit hard where it will do the most damage. Four units of depleted saber militia that we can manipulate, micromanage really well to exploit weaknesses, to negate their archers, and then we've got four units of cavalry that can't do much in terms of dancing around archers, but yeah, they've got high charge bonus, so we've got two units of Lancers there that are half full. And then of course, the Axes. I'm going to try and use the Axes in this fight. I'm going to try and make them viable. I think it can be done. I've thought about it and I think I can make these guys justify their existence. I'm going to try anyway. There they are behind the trees, occluded. So they've got three units of archers, two professional archer units. So they're going to be shooting fast and they have armor. So they're going to be hard to charge down in the melee. But we can do it. Just need to buy enough time. Gonna put these guys up here on this flank. And then I'm going to try and pull their units out. And once we've uh, taken out the archers and the cavalry and it's just infantry left, that's when I think I'm going to involve the axe band. Start doing some damage. What I'm thinking is that if we use the charge bonus, because that's the one thing they've got in their favour, high charge bonus. So, we use the charge bonus by charge cycling, hitting and running. So, that could work. If we do it really well, it's, it relies a lot on the timing, I think. But maybe then we can use them as a, a poor man's cavalry unit. Maybe. Alright, so yeah, I'm bringing all of the Sabre Cavalry and Militia. They're right up against the edge of the map, so we can't maneuver properly, so I've got to just make things happen from the front. Can't deform their formation heavily, which is what I would usually want to do. And put them over here. Fuck, I'm just charging straight up to them. Let's see if we can get away with it. Why is she lagging all the way behind, for fuck's sake? Alright, now... They're shuffling. 
take any good charges we can. Spears right behind, maybe a problem. And I think that's good. They didn't even fire. They didn't even fucking fire. I'm gonna make the most of this right now. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Fucking hell. Taking out the archers first. Archers the most important. I can maybe pull the spears off with the Saber Cavalry Militia. Uh, maybe. Shit. I've got to be careful here because if those archers start firing, they will do a lot of damage. I need to make a gap around the side here. Two units of archers, slightly shielded by spears. Yeah, we can get through there. We're going to take so many losses if we get shot up. Got to take out these fucking archers, man. That cavalry unit. Oh, it's going to chase. I'll just let it chase. Come on, get the fuck in. Jesus. I need to get around these spears. We can maybe hit- Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. I need to just stay back from all this. No losses there, really. Kinda got away with that, somehow. And shit, Sauron is trapped. So that's two archer units down. Sauron is actually fine. Fucking hell. He is doing alright in there. <laughs> I need to get everything out here though, because the spears have arrived and they'll start doing a lot of damage. I can get around and chase them down. They still have 75 and they might rally, so I can't permit that. Cavalry unit is going to get destroyed by that superior cavalry. Oh man, there's a fucking... Sao Ren is just all spread out. Holy shit. I can't get out of that properly. That's a really bad situation, because that means there's localized damage spikes. He could die. And that unit of spears. Oh, they Fuck it, fuck it. Just run away then. Yeah, he's not, he's not taking many losses, so that's alright, actually. And they're gonna... I want them off the battlefield, so... I'm staying in. And now we've got three units of fucking spearmen. Alright, let's intervene over here. Let's swarm the cavalry. So, if I can hit them from the front, pull them off Sao Ren. He's, he is dying, like he's taking losses there. Shit. I'm charging that while they're moving from both sides, and then that should give Sao Ren a way to get out of that. Oh man. Alright, this can work. Fucking hell. How are they not gone yet? Jesus. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? How is he so slow? What the fuck? Alright, this is retarded, man. That fucking strategist needs to go away. Holy shit. How the f fuck? Alright, this is just... Oh, this is chaotic. It's hard to make from management weight of this crap. Fucking hell. I've got to just stay in that fight there. And the cavalry unit is gone finally. Lady Bayan can maybe turn that unit around and then... Oh wait, wait, I can break it I think. I really need that unit to break. Man. Can I get a charge? Yeah. So we're controlling this now. I'm gonna have to just fight that strategist. Fuck's sake. That's a bad fight. Fucking hell. That unit's killed 24. And that's bodyguards that have died. I was hoping to get some good fights for these axemen, but that's not really happening, is it? Two separate fights going on. Alright, let's hit that. Bring these two around here. I can put them back in that fight, I think, and pin the unit. 
No, 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 I need to keep them on the move. Alright, yeah, they've routed. Charging uphill, it's not going to work that well. Although I can pull something here. I can break that unit now from behind. Come on. They should go. Send the Naxes in as well. And that should finish them. And then I think I can sandwich that unit. And at that rate we might just have the win. That unit was in guard mode that whole fucking time. Alright, put the axes there to continue this shit. Two units there though, shit. Well, this has really been something. Are they all gonna break yet? I'm not worried about Sao Ren. He should survive that, definitely. Alright, now to hit them in the side, get the cavalry out before they get intercepted. I've not been able to make the most of. Actually, he's got a decent number of kills, so never mind. Alright, and now run away, and then once they start to move, once they're on the move, I can hit them while they're moving, and that might be really effective. I wish they would stay spread, fuck's sake. Stay spread out. I need to just keep cycling this then. Oh, and they've routed. No, they haven't. They were fucking about to. God damn it, man. I need to get... Yeah, I need to just follow up then. Oh, that fight. How the fuck are they still fighting? This is really protracted and drawn out. Oh my god. Now they're gonna break. Surely. Holy shit. Get them away from the edge of the map so I can chase them down. If it's not too late. Because we have won this. I wonder if the axes will have had a good fight. They're actually pulling a positive kill death ratio, and I think that's not been on routers, too, so. Oh no, I don't want to kill him. I want to maybe capture him. But he might be fucking dead, so. General recently died, god damn it. Yeah, so he's dead. He died. Wang Wan is dead. And I think any second, one more good charge and they're all gone. So let's get the axes to make that happen. This has been pretty sweet. Uh, spread them out a bit. Get some nice angles. I'm going to be hitting them from around there. G infantry captain? Nah, 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 nah. Let's get the militia. Fuck that shit. So I'm going to hit that militia unit with these axes. They've lost 15 to kill 45, so that's like a 3 to 1. That's the best I've ever seen. <laughs> Actually is. What are these fucking guys doing? They're exhausted, very tired, so just a bit exhausted. God damn it. I wish they would stop going another way. I don't want to fight the, the infantry captain though. They have really good stats and morale, so even if we get some kills on them, we'll have to pay for it. Yeah. Feigning charges. We can guarantee the axemen a good charge. Two hundred and seven. Ninety-two. Come on, go away, go away. I wonder how close Sao Ren came to dying during that clusterfuck scenario. When he was mixed in with all their units, and now we have the moment. Perfect. Oh yeah. 
And that's it. They got wiped out. And hopefully Lady Bayan can rank up and we'll get our extra speed and range block chance. 23 losses, 70 kills. That's not that bad. And that unit's gonna get away, fuck. Heroic victory though. Sal Ren just got his first heroic victory. And we were outnumbered. What was it? Four or five to one? Not bad. I wonder how many losses we took to pull that off. Can't have been that many because we have almost all the axes still. And a few other units did make it off the field, I noticed. And the general died, of course. Kind of a shame. Because Sal Ren won the duel. Uh, they've got. So they've got the infantry captain. And that's about it. Some archers survived too. Alright. We lost 178 to kill. Yeah, 10 to 1. KD. Sweet. So they've. They are fucked. They've only got. Yeah, they've got. This guy dead and his retinue is still there, but I don't know if they'll be able to fight. Or what. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention in part two, Sun Jian died. Yep. Tiger of Jiangdong is dead. That's an event that can happen. So, it did. And we'll get a crushing defeat, what the fuck? So now the zone of control around the town is gone. And we can merge. Crushing defeat style? What the fuck? Alright, so what do we want here? Well, because he's the faction heir, we should want... And also because he has melee infantry, we're gonna want the melee evasion. That's priceless. And then... Probably have to fight this manually. And get that win. Yep. That's good though that Sal Ren ranked up. I wish it was Lady Bayan though. Still not getting any upgrades for her. Crush and defeat my ass. So does this mean we get another heroic victory and if we pull us off? Or, or is it going a regular victory because of the superior forces? I don't know. Either way, that's pretty good. We we just conquered to the south with an improvised army. Like, none of these were on the field to begin the campaign. So, we just made this show work. And we can make the axes work again, too. Gotta watch out for those archers, though. They've got 69 militia there. Bringing the axemen up. This one got some XP and they're all gonna slowly get XP from having Sal Ren in the army. So every turn we'll passively pick up XP in addition to all the kills that we get and victories. I need to protect this unit that only has nine and the reinforcements are gonna be coming in from behind and there's an infantry captain and two professional archer units. So, gotta watch out. What's going on here? Wow, they hit a deer. There was a clatter of steel when they hit the deer there, that's fucking strange. I could have probably learned to play this like this, but man, it would be confusing eventually. So, what is that? Spears there. Where's the reinforcements though? Yeah, there they are. Alright. Never tried this before. And the archers are running away. They have cavalry too, what the fuck? And the spears are trying to... No, they're not. So we hit the Sabre Militia with the Lancers. Why are these so... Oh yeah, it's because they've got upgraded speed from being in the retinue, of course. And we need to get around there now. 
to get these archers before they start shooting at the tank. And we've totally shredded that fucking saber militia. Fuck it, we're just getting in there. Stay away from the spears. Axis can get up and anvil for us. They didn't even shoot. Oh man. They would have absolutely devastated me in that first fight in the snow. And now they're... They didn't even get a single kill. They didn't shoot a single arrow. What the fuck? Well, suffice to say this farm is fucking ours, finally. Hard fought, but yeah. Go off. Let's hit them. No, wait, wait. Let's get some mangoes first, and then we can hit them. And there's G Militia there. I'm gonna get all around. In fact, I can maybe just hit them with Lady Bayan when they're on the move. Alright, I'm getting the tank over. Hit this G Militia first, and then that will mean the infantry captain routes as soon as possible again. I have a habit of leaving them to the very end. Because they have high morale and good stats, like they're good in a fight, they have armour. Oh, and that's... yeah, that's a good charge for taking that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can get a good charge with... No, 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 that's bad, that's bad. Fuck. And we did it here, yeah. Finally! That fucking manoeuvring for the coup de gras. Oh man. Axemen have... Four... Nah, they're not even... They're barely positive. Like, if you subtract the charge, they just went negative there. Fuck's sake, man. They went negative in a straight fight against fucking halberds. Oh, that's retarded, man. And yeah, that's it. Got the farm. But that's what I'm talking about, man, with these axes. Fuck's sake, they got... They were about to go negative there. Decisive victory. Well, if it could have been a heroic victory, we would have got one there, because they did barely any damage, so... And we totally destroyed them. But yeah, that fucking... Oh, those axes need a buff. Melee infantry need a buff against anti-cavalry or all-rounders because they just don't do well enough. Lost 34 to kill for 50, so... KD 15, when we were meant to be decisively defeated. Yeah, that... We could never have had a heroic victory there. That was impossible. Right, so we have the farm. May as well consolidate what we can. And let's see... F ooh, 50. So... Heroic victories plus 15. So... We just got that heroic victory with Sal Ren, which is what I'd been wanting to do all along. Get him in charge of an army and start giving him heroic victories while he's the faction heir. He might not be forever, but for now he's the faction heir. And he's the only character that we can request aid from, so... We just got a heroic victory with him, and that's about one third of... Uh, Request aid, which would give us 1,600. Wait a minute. Yeah, so one third of 1,600 effectively. Because we got a heroic victory while he was in charge. Yeah, that's a way to think about it. And also, I did some uh, calculations in regards to heroic victories. Let me get up. I don't usually do this, but. I figured it out, and it's informative, so... Alright, so... Request aid yields 1,600 for a 10 turn effect, and it's immediately granted, and it averages to 160 income per turn for its 10 turns of effect, of course, and that's for every request aid that you've got in effect. So, it's minus 50 immediate satisfaction, and it reduces to zero over 10 turns. So over those 10 turns, it's like an average over that period of minus 25 for a request aid. So 160 per turn over the 10 turns with an average of 
minus 25 satisfaction over the 10 turns. That turns out to be about 6 gold per satisfaction point that you possess surplus per turn. So that heroic victory that just got plus 15 satisfaction, that's like an average of 7.5 satisfaction over the next 10 turns. So that's about 40 a turn over the next 10 turns for that heroic victory. So it's worth about 400, something like that. And the tempo, which gives plus 10 average per turn, of course, because it's a flat 10. That's worth about 60 income per turn right now. And yeah, that's given us... That's actually given us... Uh, yeah, local infrastructure plus 10. So that works out at 60 income per turn for the Factionaire. And if we had a second character that we could request aid on, because it's diminishing returns, because there's the 40 base and then the, the 10 to every other Faction member, it sort of drops off a little bit, so it would be worth 100 per turn because we would have two characters being milked and they would diminish each other slightly because minus 50 for him and then minus 60 for the next one, which now becomes minus 60 for him too, so yeah, it diminishes. So it's like 60 per turn, then 100 per turn probably, and then about 120 or 130 per turn if we had 3, so... So this region is worth... If you're gonna be extracting the satisfaction with request aid, it's worth about between 60 and 120 a turn. And of course satisfaction has other benefits and other ways to use it as well, so... Yeah, I was thinking about it and figured out. And a philosopher on your faction leader heir or prime minister is worth about it follows the same amounts so if you could have three philosophers on these three for the plus 30 satisfaction faction wide that would be worth about between 200 and 400 a turn just just alone those slots being used up like that so yeah that's how much this shit is actually worth I think and I want to now attack. So that's the south dealt with, like, we just took Yang Zhao, it's ours, and we're replenishing slowly. Still got that plus 10% on this guy for two turns. So we're going to have another 40% replenishment on these before we can potentially move out down here or over there. Or even here, but we probably won't trade with him. Who do we have trade with right now? I don't think we have any trades, do we? Yeah, we do, but I think it runs out in a turn. Who do I trade with? Uh, yeah, so it's Leo Day, and it runs out in... No, wait, I don't know. Is that how it works? And yeah, they still don't want to give us Liu Humin, in part because of the respectability, and also uh, in, in the latest patch, I think they ninja patched back these numbers, the breakdown. So that's interesting. Like they actually put it back. <laughs> so we can see the breakdown of the total disposition into its constituent parts. So yeah, like minus minus five point two respectability from the minus seventeen trustworthiness. And I don't know if he's trusting like the personality type, because that might mitigate the respectability penalty, so... If we go to Yan Shao, for example... And then offer to... Actually, we can do that. Hmm. And he's someone that... is reluctant to... Oh wait, and there's Liu Bei. Can I... Yeah, I can negotiate with him. And he's got... Forged iron scale, and that's it. But we don't really want that, so fuck that. So if I offer him, he wants. He doesn't have any food, so yeah, one point seven respectability is attached to this. Minus one point seven. So that's that's like we get half the return. 
because the base is the total base is minus 1.7 so because our trustworthiness is so bad right now our food is worth half as much so we just don't sell it very much so <laughs> to make the most of that one of these new well they suck so and this guy's vain yeah so Oh, is that the... yeah, that's the Bree guy, okay. And of course, Yang Song, who doesn't have the brilliant... Fucking hell. So, that's the south dealt with, we just sit here and replenish. I don't think I want to have any additional units. Lady Bayan is three quarters of the way to rank two, and then we can get speed at the very least, potentially the range block chance. Maybe the speed is better. His speed is always of benefit, whereas the range block chance is highly situational. Yeah, probably better to go with speed in most situations. And of course, we're rank 5 on these two. And I went for scare on this guy, like I just went there and unlocked the scare. But this is Dune, and he's the guy that plucks his eye out of its socket with the arrow that impaled it. So that's something that I think inevitably happens to this guy. It's an event and he's gonna be given scare as a trait. So we, we're... we and it doesn't stack so this was kind of redundant. Of course it gives plus eight instinct and opens up easier access to the top line of skills but mm, if you wanted to min-max and optimize maybe would not have went for that. So at least in the meantime I can make the most of it by getting into fights, as many fights as possible with him, until the time comes where he actually does have the lose the eye and have an eye patch. It's a pretty nice feature. So that's actually a good change I think that they made that I commented on in part one with how this guy's skill tree and Sao Sao's are different now. So you're no longer forced to have redundancy with Scare because it used to be that this was unlocked from the very start and then eventually it doubled up with the other the one-eyed trait which gives Scare too so now it's like you can choose if you want to unlock Scare or just wait for it to arrive eventually you're no longer forced to have two Scares that don't stack but I forgot about that and I stacked them anyway <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna have to just charge into dense blobs throughout the start of the campaign and make the most of it. Starting with these fuckers here. So, I don't have any movement range. I've got to just... Yeah, so next turn we move on these guys. And it's turn 4, so turn 5 when I end turn we, we might get to unlock a unique character. He might arrive on turn 5. One of these, or I think we just get given him, and he's he's given a salary, and we just have him. So that will happen when in turn maybe, and then we can move on. Tao Qian, and also this is, I really hope that this all goes the way I want it to because I happen to know that Tao Qian. Can we can we look at his family tree? Like how did I get the family tree again? Fuck. So. Where the fuck is it? Alright, characters and then... How do I get the fucking family tree, so... This isn't something that's very useful usually. I just want to demonstrate something, if it's possible. Well, I can maybe find it through here. Yeah. Anyway, Tao Qian has a trait which makes them more susceptible to ambushes. So, the ideal way to play this is to move Xiao Dun and Cao Cao in the Four Saber Cavalry Militia into Tao Qian's territory between the farmland and the city, put them on this road, and go for the ambush because that base 45% 
is going to be heightened to, I think, 60%. So we're probably going to be able to pull off an ambush on Tao Tian. And then if we can score a heroic victory during the ambush, I think that just skyrockets the capture chance for everything. So we can maybe capture every single one of Tao Tian's generals and devastate his main army. So I need to have enough movement range to, to do that, so that's my plan. And they're all sworn now, so best buddies. And I can maybe find that family tree thing. Oh, I didn't know that this showed up when you mouse overed. Focuses on duty, command, commends perceptiveness, admires intelligence. I need to get this family tree up, fucking hell, alright. So, core, family tree. Yeah, okay, so that'll do. Nope, I can't see anything yet. Alright, so this is me metagaming right now. This guy is easy to ambush, or easier than he should be. And that's what we're going for. Tao Ying. Tao Shang. And he's sitting, I think, in that town right now. That's what they tend to do. The garrison, their main city. And then, when I declare war, which I won't do yet, I think he's going to fortify his front against me because he's at peace right now, but once I declare war, he's going to then have a front towards Peng Cheng. And it, it'll make sense to garrison this farm, so we know what he's going to do, and we can maybe capitalise on it. Unless, of course, he he's already garrisoning the farmland, which I don't... Nah, I can't. I think I can see if he was. Alright, so there's Wang Lang dead, of course. Shang Ya as well. Yu Fan died. Man, we killed a lot of characters. And we didn't get to rob them of all their unique ancillaries. Not, well, not unique, but useful ancillaries that we don't have yet, that we could use. But I think I'm going to try and do that with Tao Qian, because he has some nice stuff. Alright, so it's turn, wait a minute, turn four. So I don't know if we're getting to research something faster than we otherwise would. But I'm going for 10% replenishment, and that's going to require one, two, three, four researches. No, wait. Five. So, yeah, i got to go through all these to get it. Military supplies is more useful before construction cost reduction, so go for that first. And then in... It says next reform in five turns, alright? So, it's meant to take five turns, but we're on turn four, and we already have a research, so... I don't know if that tempo just helped us. I'm confused about that, I don't know. And all assignments, so... Nah, we don't have enough characters yet, fuck. That's another thing, we can employ this guy's generals. If they get captured when we fight against them, then we can use them for all these assignments and court positions, all this stuff. So you want to have as many opportunities to capture as possible. Capture and release, like killing them on the battlefield. You don't get to just pluck their shit off their corpse, unfortunately. It's not as easy as that, you've got to defeat their army and have them rout and then run, roll the capture chance. Like we did right at the start with this guy. Yeah, so... Wait a minute. Zero satisfaction. <laughs> Minus 105 requested aid. Fucking hell, so we just, like, milked this guy for 5k. That's so good. Alright, so, end turn, and I really hope... Like, this could... There's a lot of RNG involved here, and there's... Obviously... Like... <laughs> I don't want to cheat and just totally rig the fucking game in my favour all the way through, but I would like it if on turn 5 we could get this guy. If not, then it, w it would definitely suck. But in patch 1.2, the chance of getting unique characters is higher. And it looks like we didn't get him. Alright, so be it. Yeah, so... 
think over the next like five or ten turns, there's going to be a continuation of the possibility to get him. Hopefully we do. Right, so... I don't think Tao Qian is in there. I don't think he is, so... I'm going to declare war. This is what he gets for intending to kill my fucking dad. Time to get him. Alright, so th there's the road. There's the zone of influence around the farm. And... Bottom left corner, it gives a preview of the movement range. So I need 25% remaining to still be able to change stance to ambush, so... Twenty-six percent. And there he is, alright. So now we're in ambush mode, and it's forty-five percent. And can we see him now? Yeah, we can. So there we go. Minus fifteen percent chance of avoiding ambush. So that gives us a sixty percent chance to ambush. And if we can actually ambush... Oh man. Oh man. So... We want to strip him of all this shit. He's got a sword, a horse, and a military instructor, and I don't have one of these yet. And they're useful. Especially for this fucking shit here. 25% chance of ambushing for own army, so... That 45% would be 70%. Or 85% against this fucking dolt. So yeah, I really want to start stacking ambush stuff if possible, and that's what strategists are good for. If I had a strategist here, I think it would be even higher than 45%. I think it would be like 60 or 70. So, the trap is set. All we have to do now is wait. We declared war. And he's very happy to be at war with us. Cool as fuck. And now, he's gonna reinforce. I don't think he saw. So now he's gonna move to reinforce this town that shares a border, this farm that shares a border with Pengcheng. And that's when we fuck him up. And I'm gonna upgrade this town now, I think. So, no wait. Yeah, right. Upgrade this stuff first. And I'm upgrading the farm already, which will give a substantial garrison here. Army's low supply, general's unhappy. And it's got a penalty to replenishment rate while supplies are low. Yeah, that sucks. So, slow replenishment here. But that doesn't matter because I'm mostly... I want to just replenish down here and focus on this shit here for now. I do want to blitz the fucking map, but I, I'm just fixated on this going right. So... Milked him and he's... Happy, everything's fine. Can't build anything else. Can't do anything else. Wait, diplomacy, maybe. But he doesn't have. Oh, he's just got that, and I don't care about that. Uh, this guy. No one has any ancillaries. Like, this is why it's so important that we can efficiently extract ancillaries from all the characters that we come against, like this guy. Yeah, there's fucking three of them. And I think we stand to get... Like, if if a general fights in a battle and loses, there's a chance that he'll drop some of his ancillaries. So, yeah, I really hope that we can get at least some of that. Because I've got a lot of slots open already on my characters. So, yeah, I'm in the turn now. Hopefully this fucking works. Fucking perfect. So, we have 300 against 2,150. 7 to 1 again. Looks like it is going to be a pattern. So he's ambushed with his 2,100 and we only have 300 well-led, competent horsemen under 
South Sowenden. I want this guy. That guy's an 18 year old or 20 year old champion. This guy's like 35 or something. I don't think either of these have any ancillaries. I want to devastate the army and have these guys all survive and run away. And if we can score a heroic victory, in addition to it being an ambush, we might be able to capture all three of them. Oh man, here we are. Look at this, it's fucking perfect. They're arranged in column. And we can just take our pick of how to fight them. Oh my god, it's, it's fucking... And this is the... This is the opportunity that I'm always trying to create, to cultivate with my micromanagement. Fucking charge opportunities on the bows and even the cavalry. And with an ambush, you're just given that shit. It's like, go on, charge whatever the fuck you want. You get a free charge on every fucking unit. The entire, the entire battle line is just, yeah. <laughs> so there's the escape point if they run into this they can get away and maybe even dodge the capture chance I'm not sure it says any unit reaching the extraction point can be safely withdrawn from the ambush battle does that mean for me what the fuck I'm not sure what that means but they definitely want to just offer up units as a sacrifice and pull as much shit as possible to the extraction point because they're at a severe disadvantage. What's the morale like? I don't know if they have any morale penalties. See if we could fight this at night and have fire arrows. Oh man, we could maybe just... and also this guy with his fear effect of course. Scare reduces near nearby enemy morale, does not stack. So we could fucking just mass route with absolute panic and terror. Fucking entire swaths of their column. Oh man. Of course, the intuitive thing to do here is to just make a line and just slam all your shit directly into them. That's called a linear ambush, to just rush them as hard as possible. But that's not how you make the most of an ambush. That's really tactically flat. So, I'm thinking... We want to generally start from the high ground and work our way down to constantly be exploiting the superior charge bonus. And to do that, I'm thinking... We want Sao Sao and Dune, so lead with these, and of course Wedge, want to be making the most of Wedge. So I'm gonna just ignore the Saber Militia, do not really give a fuck. There's two units of archers here, so I kind of want to hit them immediately. We want to cripple the army by taking out all the cavalry and archers of course. So the first unit of spears is all the way down here. And then they've got a block here of archers, so the spears are all kind of together. There's only two units of spears, fucking hell. And they're right in the center, so we can hit the front and the back. So I'm gonna have the saber cavalry down here. And maybe some here to hit from the other side, if it's necessary. So everything is hidden, ready to spring the fucking trap. I'm so glad I got that. 60%. Oh man, I'm so glad. Oh, and what the fuck is this? So we have doubled up wedge. What the fuck? So I can unequip the herdsman from Dune then. Because Sao Sao is rank 5 and he's given himself wedge, maybe. I'll do that later. In the meantime, I'm going to just use that wedge. I want to position them as close as possible. Alright. So what's going to happen here, I think, is we'll hit these units, they will continue marching, maybe get a bit panicked and start bringing some units up, and then the cavalry will move faster than the archers and the sword unit. The spears will come up first, so it'll be spears and cavalry chasing these two after we've devastated the archers, and then we can hopefully mop up the rest of the archers with these four, and that's my plan, that's my thinking here. <laughs> So let's fucking do it. And 
Holy fucking shit. Yeah, they're wrecked. They're fucking wrecked. They don't see... Oh wait, they see this unit. Shit. Fuck, I need to run away with these. Alright, let's get around them. So, these units get fucking wiped. I need to just run away. That's good, we can just bait. That's the strongest unit on the battlefield, so... And now we can start hitting these archer units down here. And I'm bringing Salsa around to hit that sword unit. We can ignore all these spears. Champion might be out of the fight. He's on a fucking wild goose chase. And now we can just shred fucking everything here. I need to catch these units, fuck. I need to bring him down. I want that fear effect on all the fucking units. Guard moden. Oh, this is what I wanted. This is fucking it. Everything's on fire there, like if that was at night, that would be so good. I'm taking that charge while they're on the move, it's too nice. It's too good an opportunity. Ooh, and yeah, that unit's gonna route, fucking hell. And I'm bringing Sal Sal over here for this. Oh shit, shit, come on, come on, come on, move. I need to keep running away. So, they're all fucking dead. That general's routing because he got caught in a charge. <laughs> Collateral damage. And now I can get that unit facing the wrong way. And they can't have many left. They cannot have many men left. Alright, so... It's just that spear unit and then all the infantry is fucking dead. Holy shit. And are they gonna all route now? How the fuck can they still be here? How are they still fighting? What the fuck? I don't want to kill him. Alright, I've got to just take take the charge on this guy. And keep running with that cavalry unit, because it's done a fucking amazing job of baiting them, holy shit. Come on, route. Are you bastards? Fucking, how are they still fighting? It's totally hopeless for them, what the fuck? Alright, Tao Chan is routing. Just down to this guy now. Come on. Oh, yes. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit. That may be one of my best performances in Total War of all time. That was... I don't know how that could have possibly went better. Fuck me, man. Now I know how our minis felt after Tuteberg. <laughs> 600 kills, 550 kills, one kill because it was kiting that champion the whole fucking way around the map. 440 kills, 150 kills, 240 kills. And that was when we were outnumbered, 7 to 1. Oh man, doesn't get any better than that. That is how you fight a total war battle. 45 losses to their 2000. Oh, we only captured one. And he has no ancillaries, but we're employing him. And Ransom. And he just, he's like, fuck this, I'm out here. <laughs> I'm, I'm stripping him of his ancillaries. Fuck him. He doesn't get away that easily. We should have captured them. Devious Attendant. That was unrelated. Alright, well, I'm gonna figure out what to do about this guy. Maybe if I attack the farm, I can draw him over. So that's what I might do. Might have to keep manipulating to get his shit off of him. But he's not a threat. I mean, we have cavalry supremacy. And we can take territories while they're just a nuisance at worst. I really wish I got this guy because we're gonna have to fight him again. Superstitious. Yeah, so we get random events if we get him and I think that opens up unique opportunities like capturing, like getting a, a horse, Dilu, part of the Three Kingdoms, uh, romance literature. I think Liu Bei was given it. But we can get that horse 
through this guy if we employ him. So I'm going to try to get him, definitely. And then we have a character that has superstitious. But yeah, that's it. Just wish we got Ojiya and Janwei. If you like what I'm doing here and want more of it, you can support me on my Patreon. Thanks to all patrons, with a special thanks to Matteo Olivetti and Nerdington.